This week marks the ninth anniversary of The Last of Us and the second anniversary of The Last of Us Part 2. I was going to make some kind of video on the whole franchise and I hadn't quite decided on what that would be when something happened. So why'd you leave Boston? I've been on quite the adventure, little brother. I reckon it's got something to do with that girl. It's got everything to do with that little girl. The long rumoured and eventually leaked Part 1 remake was officially announced, a game that has long been questioned in terms of its validity and its purpose. I'm a massive fan of The Last of Us. I've played the main game around seven times, but even still, I'll be honest with you, I never saw the need for a remake when the rumours began to surface. I knew I would play it, and I knew I'd be curious, as anyone would be that has their favourite game remade. However, the turning point for me was seeing all of those rumours come to fruition with the announcement trailer. Now, not only do I see the need for this remake, I think it is utterly essential. And here's why. The Last of Us was a barrier-breaking title for video games, offering up a thoughtful and mature emotional experience unlike anything we'd seen at that point. It was a game that reveled in the quiet moments, a game that was just as riveting during a cutscene as it was during many of its white knuckle combat sections. It's why many of us didn't see the need for a remake. The graphics in both the original and the remastered versions of the game still hold up to a degree and with its timeless storytelling, the overall opinion of The Last of Us is that it is barely aged a day. Except it kind of has. Now I know a lot of you will disagree with that, but know that I am in no way saying that the game is bad looking or downright unplayable, no. However, there is an undeniable fact that when you line this new remake or even part 2 up with the original, there is a noticeable lack of nuanced details. You begin to see how far graphically this series has come, allowing for far more interpretable performances and a real lifelike emotionality in the eyes of its characters. All very important stuff for a game that focuses so intensely on character development. But the improvements don't just stop there. You have gameplay that feels far more fluid in the future titles that works hand in hand with that survival by the skin of your teeth style that the franchise strives towards. While the original was dynamic in some senses, if you played the game for any length, especially in its grounded difficulty, you begin to see the restrictive barriers around its gameplay. The inability to jump, the lack of prone, very conveniently placed cover, enemies on repetitive loops, the inability to return to stealth during combat. Of course, there are criticisms to be made about Part 2's gameplay, but at the end of the day, a game should have fun gameplay, and Part 2's always kept you on your toes. Annoyingly, at this point, all we really know about the gameplay for the remake is that it will be modernised, but I'd be really hopeful that we would see an implementation of Part 2's AI in some form and a smoothing out of Joel's rigidity. However, I would temper some of those expectations because adding gameplay features from Part 2, like say the jump, would impact some of the level design of Part 1 but bringing the part one experience closer to what we got in part two makes for a brilliant and cohesive package, not just in terms of gameplay, but of cinematics as well. Because while it's not a major thing, it was a little bit weird to see our favorite characters so realistically detailed come part two, and this way you can seamlessly progress from one game to the next. And with all that considered, a remake is supposed to give players a new way to experience their favorite games. That's exactly what the part one remake is all about. Whether it's understanding a character's motivations that bit better with the help of some improved facial performances or feeling Joel's brutality through the haptics as you beat a man to death. With improved 4K60 visuals and 3D audio, Naughty Dog is going to shine on what it actually does best as well, which is realizing its settings with quiet details. I'm personally really looking forward to wandering the eerily quiet university campus or watching the sunset in Billstown. Of course, however, there is a big thorn in the side of a lot of gamers considering the price. £70 or $70, it's a lot of money for a remake of a game that has a previous version available for free to any PS5 players with PS Plus. 
And then there's the question of time, as The Last of Us is one of the youngest games out there to receive a full scale remake. Time wise, I think it's really hard to judge when the cutoff is for okay, you're old enough to remake now. Of course, games like Resi 2 and Final Fantasy 7 had around 20 years, but similarly, Demon's Souls was remade after just 11 years and it also sold for full PS5 pricing as well. Admittedly, at least Demon's Souls wasn't available on current or even last gen consoles prior to that, but it really isn't all too different from the situation The Last of Us is in. Pricing wise, it's a hard one to swallow. We aren't fully acclimatised to the current gen pricing and The Last of Us really does feel like it would have been an easy win for PS Plus Extra. But at the same time, you know people will buy it and Sony does too. The Firefly edition was sold out on the PlayStation Store within hours of its announcement. And another tactical choice from Sony is making this a PS5 exclusive. The remake is better looking than most PS4 games, but considering other big titles like Horizon Forbidden West and eventually God of War Ragnarok will be available on both generations, and as we were saying, a lot of this is about bringing the original up to the standard of the PS4 sequel, it does feel like a deliberate choice to make this available solely on PlayStation 5. I also wouldn't be surprised to see a free PS5 upgrade coming for part 2 around the launch of this game. However, bypassing all of the issues of exclusivity, pricing and need, I cannot wait to revisit one of my all time favourites with a modern coat of paint. The lighting looks fantastic, the animation and clarity stunning and as I have said previously in other videos, I think a lot of people are going to be turned around with this whole project when they see that hands on gameplay. And that's just to consider those of you out there that have already played it. This will be a great opportunity for players that missed out on the original release to give it a shot without their perspective being skewered by older graphics and gameplay. And I know a lot of you love to play older releases, but some of us really do just grow excited by shiny new games. Anyway, The Last of Us Part 1 Remake will release on September 2nd on PlayStation 5 and of course you can expect to see gameplay, impressions and our final review on the whole thing closer to the time. But let me know what you're thinking about this remake, which scenes are you most excited to replay with the new overhaul and while you're here, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We cover all things PlayStation here on Push Square, including PS Plus updates, new releases, all the latest news, reviews, tips and even just some straight up gameplay. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.